guys? Another Adonis review. I'm doing two in the same week because fuck it, why not? Normally, if you want to dig into the brain of how I make decisions, I try not to do games that are new. You may ask, why, Adonis? Why wouldn't you do new games? Is it because you're poor and you wait for them to go to sale? Partly. But I would say even more so, even if I did get it immediately because I don't get free codes. The reason I don't do it immediately is basically just because I can be self-aware enough to know that my videos aren't better than IGN or Before You Buys, possibly. So, you don't normally need a thousand different subpar reviews to give you an idea. So, normally I try to aim at giving reviews that on games that were good a year ago or maybe farther and you know, are they still worth playing now. But I just finished Spider-Man 2 and I wanted to give my opinion on it since it's so fresh and since I enjoyed it so much. So if you are a person that doesn't know what Spider-Man is, just get the fuck out. But if you are a person who does know who Spider-Man is, which I would imagine is everybody, let's talk about Spider-Man 2, the game. Now, if you've played Spider-Man 1, you should be pretty aware of the formula that they had. And the best way to explain Spider-Man 2 to someone who has played the first Spider-Man is it's that, but better in every way. Now, it's not completely reconfiguring the wheel, but the things that kind of made the original Spider-Man boring or monotonous, 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 you get what I'm saying, uh, they basically fixed, and then the things that people enjoyed, they've uh, amplified. So first off, I guess I'll go for someone who doesn't know what the first Spider-Man game is. Now, if you haven't played the first Spider-Man game, go play that. You know, it, yes, it came out a few years ago. It's remastered. It's a PS5 version of it, and it still looks phenomenal. You know, definitely play Spider-Man and Spider-Man Mar Morales and do those first. It, it, they connect. They're great games. They're worth playing. The only negative I have to really say about Spider-Man, the first one, is that the DLCs are like fucking an hour long, and that's pretty upsetting. Beyond that, hopefully they fix that when, if you know, this one gets DLCs and they make the DLCs blood and wine worthy. That would be pretty dope. But beyond that, that's essentially what you should do first if you've even played it. Now, if you have played the first one and you're like, okay, well, what should I expect with this one? Again, expect everything better and, and more maintained. Uh, for example... Graphically, I've seen some people say that the graphics are worse than perhaps a remaster. I can't personally f say that I felt like it was a huge difference. Um, honestly, when I played the first one, immediately, uh, you know, back in 2018, I was un unimpressed with the graphics. And the, the main reason, and that's the same with this one, it, to be honest, is because Spider-Man's core gameplay is a super hero who zips around New York City in a matter of seconds and minutes. So the biggest negative when it comes to Spider-Man, the first one and this one, is when you do get, you know, a street level, like you would if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, and you're just walking around the street. It's very empty and, you know, they try to add people and you know the feeling and vibe of a city and they do their best but it, it's i mean and, you know if you compared it to cyberpunk for example it, it'd be laughed out of stage but that's not why we play this game we don't play it to walk around the city and wave to people of spider-man which you can do but why we play it is to be a superhero and feel like you are spider-man and the first one did it and this one nails it too um and that's where it truly exceeds so again another one of the negatives from the original spider-man was because it was this open world it had the trope of having to try to 
provide open world activities. Uh, and unfortunately, unlike Cyberpunk and The Witcher, their their side missions and things that kind of occupy time in an open world were boring, monotonous, and the same shit over and over again. And you know, there's times now and then where you can get over maybe a new power or skill or suit, so you know what beating up a few people. But end all be all, you know, if the whole map is just you flying to uh, some random place on the map and then fighting the same guys the same way, but they're just wearing slightly different suits because they represent a different crime organization. So instead of wearing black masks because they work for Kingpin, now they're wearing hunter outfits so they work for Craven. Well, that's not like, that's not very good use of uh, open world. Luckily, with Spider-Man 2, they've realized that, and I feel like there's truly a perfect amount of everything. Uh, they still have open world things similar to that, but they, the variety has expanded. They've added, you know, this green garden thing that you can do, which gives you little, you know, ways to be a nerd, and that's different than just beating people up. They give you, you know, the normal beat people up shit, but... In this one, you can eventually do enough where you unlock this, the major secret base, which gives you a little side mission that's, you know, funner than, you know, it's like a kind of a little treat, like an extra main mission, side mission that you get if you complete all the, the, the mini ones. And the thing is that there is not too much of it. You know, this game, I'd say, has probably 50 to you know, I don't know, 40 to 60 hours worth of gameplay overall. And that will give you, you know, a 100% completion of the game. And it won't feel like you had to scour every inch of the game and do the most boring, dumb shit to do it. It, you, it, it was easy to do the things that were the open world things. I was happy to do it. And I was disappointed when it was done, even if they weren't at Witcher 3 level of side missions. Another thing that this game truly excels at, which the first one excelled at, and it, which is what makes this game truly above bar when it comes to it, is the thing that you're seeing now on screen, which is like these random scenes and moments where they flawlessly put in the normal gameplay mixed with special, you know, enhanced fight scenes that are like movie-like where you're zipping around with working with someone else and you guys help each other take people out or you're jumping through the city, jumping through portals and you, you know, you perfectly use your Spider-Man skills to do something that you can't technically do in the game, but you can do in the game. It's so well done. They also add a good amount of variety doing little things like when you have to go through a building and sneak through it all spider-like. And even the dreaded MJ fucking thing that they did in the first one where you have to hide as her and for some reason they added it, that in. Even that's not a boring, you know, as it should be but on paper. You know, they give her weaponry and ways to shock people and take out just a whole organization by herself because why, why the fuck not, I guess. And... You know, it's not like they overdo it, but it's, a, again, a change of pace. And, and that's the thing that you should look for in any game. You know, any game can be great and, ha and just be a great fighting game. But if they can find a way to change it up to where you're not always doing the same thing, but you're still having fun, that's how you get a great game. And Spider-Man does that really well. The They have countless scenes like the one you're seeing now. This one's a, a more early, uh, earlier on in the story type of side mission you know so don't get mad it, it this is the first half first 30 percent of the game what you're seeing now but scenes like you're seeing now happen multiple times you know and that's what they did in the first spider-man game you know in the very beginning and same thing with miles morales in the very beginning of miles morales version you start off uh chasing the rhino through the city it's those scenes that truly make the game special and it seems like Spider-Man 2 understands that. And instead of giving us, you know, one in the beginning and one at the end and, and one in the middle, maybe, you know, they, they sprinkle 
five, six, seven, eight, I don't know. Uh, multiple. They give it to you multiple times. So you're living those crazy running through the city feelings. Uh, and it's not just at the main climax of the story, which I like. And again, as I've said in previous videos, the grind to get, you know, iconic suits and better gadgets and stuff is also a joy, you know, and, and, and it's constant. You do, you're constantly injecting that dopamine of joy into your system, you know, because every fucking five minutes you get a new suit and, and it becomes, which suit do I want to wear today? Which it just makes me feel so jolly. So this game, like I said, if you play the first one, it should be easy to understand. It is the first one, but better in every way. They they've chipped away all the monotony of of just r reckless abandonment of open world gimmicks to force people just to have fake hundred hour games. They've consolidated it into a good length game, like I said, but without overboard killing where you can get 100% and you can get it fairly and with the constant suit upgrades and gadgets and another one of my main favorite things about this game is the fact that it made me upset that the original Miles Morales game for example you get electric skills and then you get the spider skills while Peter Parker it's nothing throwing venom into this game and giving him the venom suit gives him that second array of powers where he now has venom skills and spider skills and then miles has electric skills and spider skills and they even adjust that too so you get more variety than just like the miles morales version of it so it's really well done it's really enjoyable and like i said the main negatives are truly just the fact that the they could have still tried to make it more variety when it comes to side missions if they really felt like it um but I see what they did. is It's fine. And like I said, when you get to the main core of the city and you're on the streets, you know, that's not the best. But it, that's not what you're there for. You're there to be above the city, zipping around. They also give you new levels where you can follow these robotic hawks and through tunnels. And at first, I didn't know how I felt about the wingsuit tunnel, wind tunnels in it. But, you know... The, I never use fast travel in this whole game. And usually I am a person just, you know, fuck it. I don't want to just randomly spend my whole fucking 10 hours just crossing the city back and forth. I just use the fast travel. In this game, I never had to use it and never felt like a chore. I just, you know, if a place is really far, I just get into a wind tunnel with my wingsuit, zip across the city, and it call it a day. It, it was never a problem just to be able to fly places and not never worrying about using fast travel, which I appreciate also. And the, the last main negative I would say about this game is really just the difficulty curve. You know, I I went from starting off probably medium, uh, normal difficulty. I immediately went to hard uh, and realized that was too easy. And then I went to spectacular. Well, I think maybe spectacular is hard. Maybe an expert unlocked. I don't know. I went to the highest difficulty basically immediately. And it was never too difficult. It was actually pretty easy because you're constantly recharging your abilities and your tech and your fucking special and all that stuff so quickly that it, it, it never made the game too difficult at any given point. There's probably two or three times where I was like, oh, let me fucking make sure I be wear and dodge better so I don't die. But beyond that, uh, you know, I, I'd wish it'd be a little bit more difficult in that sense. I wish, it, you know, being spectacular was actually like, I got to be careful. Uh that and that if that's the main negative they really take away then fucking call it a day you're probably not going to see this game on sale anytime soon it, it's you know it's it's a very popular game it and justifiably so and even the original constantly stays expensive so this game i would say is worth 50 bucks you know and that's probably what you're going to find it at if you're a big fan of this, then you should get it. There's a lot of good games out, so you can't wait. I'd say the fair price of getting it would probably be like $30. If this game is $30, you see for $30, you know, it's probably going to be a good deal. And you should probably take the jump and get it if you've been wanting it. Um, but like I said, it's going to be tough. So anywhere from $40 to $30, if you see it like that in the next three months, it's probably going to be a deal you should probably jump on. Uh, because I don't foresee it going lower than $50 anytime soon. So I hope this helps you guys make a decision if you haven't made one yet. Later.